gonna shatter. That's a team right there, baby. Don't celebrate. This is how we gotta play. Leave it. Leave it. Go out there. Beat Army. It's the purest approach of the game is that you come to the ballpark as a member of the team ready to play. Wrestling is a miniature battle between two people that both have strong wills. In order for me to be successful, or in order for my athlete to be successful, he better, he better be a, uh, an, an, uh, he better be an asshole. He better be a dick. He better be selfish, and he better be mean. It's you or the other guy. Win, you live, lose, you die. <laughs> The battle lines are drawn early here. Fresh-eyed foot soldiers, innocent and eager, ready for blood's first taste. We got the real, real man. Can't go on your back because man's hot lava, and if you fall on your back, then you're in the hot lava. They learn a simple, honest lesson. It's hero or heartbreak. There's nothing in between. You shoot and grab an arm and get and grab a lay down. Flip them. This is wrestling. This is Iowa. The heartland sows a common dream that sons will one day be champions. That one day, they'll be Hawkeyes. The University of Iowa, home of the Hawkeyes. A brutal rite of autumn is taking place. A few hundred fans brave the chilly Iowa City evening. Tonight, the wrestling team selects its starting lineup. Head coach Jim Zaleski watches as teammate battles teammate for one of ten starting spots. For one, a son of Iowa and a fifth-year senior, this is the last chance. It's been difficult. I mean, it's been hard to, to have to sit and watch. And I think it's kind of the last chance to make the hard work and everything worthwhile. Josh Budke, still chasing boyhood dreams. When he started as a, as a six-year-old, his first introduction to wrestling at the University of Northern Iowa, he cried. And his grandma said, well, he certainly doesn't like this. Don't take him back. It's been something I've been doing ever since. Uh, it's just kind of, a, kind of a way of life, actually. I never really perceived that he would be good enough to even be considered to go to Iowa. And he said, Dad, I know that probably I won't wrestle there until I'm a senior. But he said, I have a chance only there to be a national champ, and that's my dream. Only one hand is raised. Only one man wins. Survival of the fittest. Three periods. Seven short minutes. It hardly seems enough time to kill a dream. It is. feel sorry for him is ludicrous. To feel sorry for him because his dream is going down the drain, I don't feel sorry for him.
personal note, I would like nothing more than to see Josh Budkey on top of the heap at the end. The thing is, he has to earn it, though. It's not that he deserves it. He doesn't deserve anything. The only thing you deserve is what you earn. You know, we're not the slickest guys out there. Don't have the fanciest moves. But, I mean, we're going to fight for every inch on that entire wrestling. They're trying to destroy me. Trying to destroy me, and I, I got the right to kill them. Make him feel like a fool. Break his spirits, trash him. Pick him up by the singlet on one side, and on the back side, just like a little kid, and throw him out the door. A lot of times I don't think, I just react. If I get somebody in the front headlock, you know, choking him, getting this part of your arm right across his throat, and just, and just squeeze it. If punching was allowed, then I'd probably do that, and biting and whatever it takes. He's afraid what I'm going to do to him in front of his parents and his family. And, and he's, he's just pitched in, in like... If it comes down to it, you know, it's... It's them or you, and, and you know, you got to be the one that's, that's going to be standing at the end. Well, if a guy gets up to his feet, you slam him back down on the mat, and then you let him go. Just to, just to let him know that you let him go, that he didn't get away, that you gave it to him. I think wrestling's a good sport because you can break somebody. You can break their spirits. You can, you know, make them be a different person for the rest of their life. Cornfields are turned under, and bitter winds bend broken stalks. For Iowans, these are welcome signs. A new wrestling season is about to begin. In the Hawkeye wrestling room, preparations have long been underway. Thirty of the best college wrestlers in the country fighting each other every day for the right to wear Iowa's black and gold. Do some hand fighting and get after it. When you step into that room, friendships, I think, are just thrown out the window. You can't be friends with the guy that you're going to wrestle with that day. I mean, if you do that, you're, you're pretty much taking a back seat to him. If you're wrestling somebody in a room, you're beating the tar out of them, you can't feel sorry for them. It'll hurt you and it'll hurt them. There's no, no room for it. A dislocated elbow, just another warrior's wound in this world of gladiators. It's a simple code. No compassion, no pity, no weakness. Jim Zaleski is both coach and product of this program, a three-time national champion for Iowa in the 80s. Assistant coach Tom Brands, another three-time champion for Iowa. World champion, Olympic gold medalist, hammering out a hard lesson. It's called the Iowa style. Over the last quarter century, no program in any sport has dominated like Iowa. You know the pressure is going to be there because you're going to be one of the top teams every year. To me, you gotta, I want that pressure. There you go. For Zaleski, success is as much a legacy as it is a lodestone. He walks in the shadow and under the constant eye of former head coach Dan Gable, the greatest American wrestler and coach of all time. Those hands. 
Yeah, I learned a lot from Coach Gable, so I, I, I stress, you know, being prepared, you know, being, you know, always trying to do more, always expecting more of yourself. Give me good rest. How much can be expected of this year's squad is unknown. They're young, untested. The answer will be measured in a season of sweat and pain. What sport demands so much and returns so little? No million dollar contracts for these student athletes. Here, the payment is scar tissue that often disfigures the face. You know, you get some girls that look at you and ask you what's wrong, and sometimes little kids come up to you and, you know, laugh at you and ask you what happened to your ears. The medical term is hematoma auris, cauliflower ear. If you see a guy with bad ears, you just know he's a wrestler and you have just a little bit more respect for that person. My mom doesn't really like it. It pisses her off. But, you know, I hate wearing my headgear and it doesn't really matter to me what my ears look like. I don't want cauliflower ear. I think it's retarded. I mean, like, yeah, odds are I'm getting it pretty good, though. But if I could make a choice, whether... If when I was done wrestling, I'd have it or I didn't have it, I would say I didn't want it. You're kind of representative or symbolic, if you will, of wrestling and pain you put yourself through. You're kind of your scarlet letter A.